I know most of my guides require the use of a PC, but I do realize that a lot of retro handheld fans simply don't have access to one. That is why for this guide, I'll be covering how to upgrade the stock OS on the Ambernic RG35XX series to the latest version of stock mod by using a phone. I'll be using an Android phone, but most of these steps should have an equivalent on Apple phones. The latest version of stock mod has RetroArch 1.18 and the necessary GPSP core to enable wireless Pokemon trades on Game Boy Advance games like Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald. This is possible thanks to the author of stock mod, CBEPX-ME, who created a way to upgrade the OS by updating only the necessary files. This means you don't have to flash an image, which means you don't lose your ROMs, saves, or save states. This process works for the RG35XX2024 version, the Plus, the H, the SP, as well as the 28XX. I do want to note here that some versions of the stock OS already have RetroArch 1.18, so you don't have to upgrade a trade Pokemon. You can check which version of RetroArch you have by going to Settings, go to RetroArch Settings, go to Start RetroArch, hit Yes. You're going to look at the number in the lower left hand corner right here. And as you can see for this version of the stock operating system, I have 1.10.3. If yours says 1.18, there's no need to upgrade unless you want to. Now before we begin, I'd like to give full credit to Wesley10 Pro. He made a guide in the RG35XX subreddit, which I use as the base for this video guide. If you found my video to be helpful, instead of leaving a like or a comment on YouTube, please go visit the thread and give the OP some appreciation. I'll link the Reddit thread in the comments below as well as the description. Now there are a few things you need before starting the process. Obviously, for starters, we'll need a phone. And the phone will need a micro SD card slot. Now most Android phones, if they have one, it'll be on the side on the left or right and it'll be right next to the SIM card slot. So you can see there's a tiny little cover here and a hole, and once you insert something in here, it'll pop out the cover, and you can insert the SD card there. Now, if you don't have an SD card slot on your phone, you need OTG support on your USB slot. So we'll have to use a micro SD to USB-C adapter instead of the micro SD card slot on the phone. You can buy these for around six to ten dollars on Amazon. As you can see here, there's a cheap one here, which is about six bucks, and then there's an anchor one for ten. Honestly, they're all the same because they're just rebrandings from the same manufacturer. Now, if you want to save money but you're willing to wait a week or two for shipping, you can buy them for roughly two bucks on AliExpress. You can just make sure that you check the store ratings to see if it's legitimate and never put in your real phone number or your credit card information and always use PayPal if you're going to use AliExpress. Reliability is questionable, but these should last enough for the purposes of this guy since we're copying over just one file. Anyways, I'll be using my phone's SD card reader for this guide, but you can use either method if you want. The second thing we'll need is an internet connection for our phone. Since we'll be downloading the stock mod upgrade file onto our phone, unzipping the files, and then copying them over to the micro SD card. The third thing we'll need is to make sure our stock OS version is dated December 12, 2023 or later. Most handhelds should be dated after this as the 2024 version, the H, the SP, and the 28XX came out in 2024. Only the earliest models of the Plus and possibly the H may have a firmware version dated before December 12, 2023. If this is the case for you, you won't be able to use this upgrade method. You can check the firmware date by going to Settings, press up on the D-pad, and look at the entry titled Firmware Version. As you can see, mine is dated January 30th, 2024, and this device is eligible for the upgrade process. Now the last thing we'll need is to make sure we have enough battery power and we need this because the upgrade process does take quite a while and we need enough battery life for it to finish. Now before we begin, a word of warning. 
The stock cars are notorious for being unreliable and having high fail rates. It's entirely possible that this upgrade process may corrupt the card. If the card becomes corrupted, the device becomes useless without the micro SD card, and you'll need a PC to attempt to fix the corrupted data on the card or reflash an image. There's always a risk, and if you aren't willing to take this risk, I would recommend that you don't do this. If you are willing to accept the risk, however, please continue with this guide. Most phones will have a micro SD card slot next to the SIM card slot. As you can see for my phone, which is a Samsung A32 5G, the slot is located on the left hand side near the top of the phone. We'll need a pokey tool like this to open the slot. You can use something like this, which usually comes with your phone, or a paper clip. Insert the tool into the hole and give it a gentle poke. The cover should pop open. We can now remove it and put our micro SD card into the second slot. We take our card and put it gently into the second slot and it should snap into place. Be careful not to use excessive force because this can break pretty easily. I'm going to put it back into our phone now. And then we're going to log in. After inserting your micro SD card, your phone may give you a notification about the card having an issue. If you take a look at the message, it'll ask you if you want to format the micro SD card. We're going to hit cancel. Under no conditions do you want to format your micro SD card, as this will erase everything, and then your card will be unusable for your device. Now the first thing we'll be doing is to delete some games to make space, so we can copy over the upgrade file, and also have some free space for the OS to move around some files. The phone most likely won't be able to access all the partitions of your micro SD card, and will probably mount the first partition it can, which will be a 128 megabyte partition. So why don't you go take a look, and as we can see here, for the SD card, we're only seeing 128 megabytes. This is useless to us, but thankfully we can use an app to access the ROMs partition, which is where we'll be copying the upgrade app into. The app we'll be using is the SanDisk Memory Zone app, so why don't we go look that up. The app is titled SanDisk Memory Zone, and the developer is credited as Western Digital Corporation or its affiliates. We're going to install this app. Okay, once it's done, we're going to open it. We're going to accept the EULA, and then I'm going to choose to opt out of the data collection because I don't want to share anything, and we're going to skip the initialization process, and then we're going to give it permissions to access all files. All right, once that's done, we're going to go to My Files. We're going to go to the micro SD card, and then we're going to go to the ROMs folder. The easiest way to make space is to delete the two largest PSP games. So we're going to go into the PSP folder. We're going to be deleting God of War, Chains of Olympus, and also Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. We're going to hit the little icon at the right, and we're going to select Delete. We're going to wait for the deletion process to finish, and I'll say Done at the very bottom, and we're going to click Done. We're going to do the same for GTA Vice City Stories. Okay, now that's done, and we have space to download the stock mod upgrade. If you wanted to play those games, you can download them again later. Okay, now to download the stock mod upgrade, we're going to start a web browser. I prefer using Firefox. We're going to search for RG35XXH stock mod.
I type very slow because I'm a boomer. We're going to be looking for the second link here. We want to make sure that it is the GitHub page for CBEPX-me, which is the author of the stock mod OS. Now, once we're in the site, I'm going to switch to desktop mode because I hate the mobile versions of the website. We're going to go on the right hand side and click on releases. We're going to scroll down to the download section here. I'm going to click on that link. Now we're going to click on the version of the handle you have. I have the H, so I'm going to click on that. We're going to click on the stock OS mod folder. And then we'll make sure we want to click on the update underscore package folder. Now for here, if you try to download this, most likely you'll hit a warning where Google will say, hey, the Google Drive limit has been reached and you can download the file. One easy way to bypass this is to click on this download all link on the top right corner here. That will create a zip folder containing those two files and it will let you download it. Zipping it will take a while depending on the speed of your phone and the internet connection. Okay, once it's done, it'll give you a notification to download. We're going to download it. And if you don't see it downloading on Firefox, make sure you have notifications enabled. As we can see here, it is downloading the package. Okay, once it's finished downloading, we can click on it to go extract. Okay, once that's done, we're going to go inside the folder and then we're going to click on the .7z file. And then we're going to extract this as well. Okay, once that's done, we're going to go copy the ROMs folder onto the micro SD card. And we're going to do that by using the SanDisk app again. We're going to pull it up. We're going to go to My Files. We're going to go to Phone. I'm going to download. I'm going to go inside the update package folder. I'm going to go inside this upgrade folder as well. And then we're going to hit the icon on the right here. And we're going to select copy to. We're going to select the micro SD card. And we're going to say copy items here. Okay, we can hit done. We're going to exit all the apps. And then now if the device will let you unmount the micro SD card, we can unmount it. But since we can't, I'm just going to eject it. Now before we move on, I would like to go over some cleanup procedures. So I would do this after you make sure the upgrade process finishes. But I'm going to show you right now for the sake of saving time. I'm going to go ahead and delete the download files. I want to save space. Okay, so that's deleted. And then I'm going to go uninstall that app because I don't like having a lot of apps on my phone. Go to apps, go to memory zone. What I like to do is force stop the app, go to storage, clear cache, clear data, uninstall. And if I don't really like the app, I will go into Google Play Store and then go to uninstalled and then just remove it from my account. I know I'm a little OCD, but I like to keep my phone clean. Anyways, that finishes the micro SD card on the phone. We're going to move on to the handheld now. Now, sometimes people make the mistake of putting it into TF2, then it won't boot. Make sure it's in TF1, which is the left hand side right here. Okay, now we're going to go into RA game. We're going to go press up on the D-pad to go to the last page. And then we're going to go into the apps folder. We want this app right here, RG35XXH Upgrade 2024-04-28. And press A. Now this will take a while for the sake of keeping this video short. I oftentimes shorten sections like this. But I will add in how much time it actually took so you can get an estimate of what the proper time is. 
Okay, once this comes up, we're going to hit yes. And once again, this may corrupt the SD card. Okay, once you see this message, you can press any key to restart. This process will also take quite a bit of time as well. Okay, it'll vibrate a little bit when it's close to being finished, and then this screen will show up, personalized system fast settings. I'm just going to keep it at default for now, but you can change it later. One of the settings I do like is quick shutdown. So whenever you're playing a game, you can tap the power button. It'll be the same as Onion OS, where it'll create a save state and then shut down the game. And when you reboot, it should load into the game. All right, once we're in here, we're going to go to settings. The first thing we're going to do is turn off the stupid button sound. Nice. So much more bearable now. We're going to go up into RetroArch settings. We're going to say start RetroArch. We're going to confirm. All right, now if you look in the lower left-hand corner, it's a bit blurry. Let me refocus it. Now if you look in the lower left-hand corner, it says 1.18, and this is what we need. We're almost there. So after you connect to Wi-Fi, you just need to make one tweak to GPSP. We're going to go into RA Games. We're going to go into Game Boy Advance, and then we're going to go to a Pokemon game. Okay, so Pokemon Fire Red, we're going to press Y to change the core. We're going to select GPSP, and then we're going to hit B to back out. Now, I don't know why this happened the first time, but when I was selecting the core, I couldn't access the menu. If that happens to you, just turn the console off, turn it back on, and go back to the game and make sure that the core is GPSP. So we're going to start the game now. Alright, when we're in the game, we're going to press the menu button on the top. We're going to go scroll down to core options. We're going to go down to link cable connectivity. And we're going to set this to GBA wireless adapter. And we're going to back out. We're going to go into netplay. One person will host, the other person will connect. Now you need the IP address, and if you ever forget your IP address, we can go into the main menu, go into information, go to network information, and on the bottom here, or one of these entries will contain your IP address. 127.0.0.1 is the IP address that you use to access the device itself, so this is not the actual IP address. All right, that's going to be it. I hope this guide helped. Once again, huge thanks to Wesley and also the person who authored the stock mod. I think it's fantastic. If you found this guide helpful, please go visit the Reddit thread and give the OP thanks. They did a great job in making that guide. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment and I'll try my best to respond to you as fast as possible. I know that people want a guide where they can flash a custom OS for any handheld or format a micro SD card of any size, but it's kind of hard to do on Android right now without rooting the device. So I'm looking into other ways, maybe possibly making a cheap tiny Linux computer using like an orange Pi board, or even using one of these devices. You know, one of these posts let you turn the RG35XXH into a small Linux desktop. I mean, these handouts are already running Linux to begin with. But anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I hope this guide helped. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there. And catch you guys next time.